excited to bring to you the my faith my womb show i welcome you this evening to season two episode two of your number one favorite show the my faith my womb show i hope your sunday has been blessed let's take a short break but before that let me say thank you to bloomberry makeup artistry for my beautiful makeup we take a short break we'll be right back welcome back if today is your first time joining us online let me hear from you in the comment section how did you hear about the my faith my womb show and if you have been watching us if you joined us throughout season one let me know how has the show impacted you how has the show benefited you and if you are just joining us do me a favor kindly hit that share button let every one of your friends know that the my faith my womb show is live if you are not following us on all our social media platforms i encourage you to do so because we are changing narratives we are changing our story we are building our faith to see the manifestation of our miracles we take our word for the womb Our word for the womb today is going to be taken from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 4. And I read. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulteress, God will judge. Let me take the NIV version, which I, the NLT version, which I love very very much okay and it says marriage should be honored by all marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for god will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral let me take that again marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for god will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral so if you are just joining us today this is our word for the womb and as you know today is it's going to be exciting we are still in the month of love yes and for our waiting couples this month i want to challenge you to do something different do not let valentine's day just pass by it has passed yes but we are still celebrating love each and every single day as we wait together for our miracle so on today's show which is sex and intimacy every waiting couples master too we are going to go deeper we are going to we don't often talk about these things especially in the church but today my guests are already in the studio seasoned counselors seasoned i mean you don't want to miss so if you haven't still shared i don't know what you are waiting for please kindly share go to our youtube channel you can also watch the divine media online tv and do subscribe so that when we upload new videos you would know that yes we have uploaded new videos and watch so we'll take another short break and when we come back we set the ball rolling if you haven't prompted someone that we are live please kindly prompt them that we are live we'll be right back Thank you. 
there is a popular saying, and let me read, sex without love is as hollow and ridiculous as love without sex. Hmm. My studio guests are grinning from cheek to cheek. Sex without love is as hollow and ridiculous as love without sex. Sex and intimacy, every waiting couple's master tool. Tonight in the studio, I am joined by two amazing people I have personally come in contact with and I have known. To my immediate right, I am joined this evening by the amazing Reverend Dr. Solomon Naughty. He is a seasoned Reverend Minister, he is a lecturer and a prolific author. He is also a counsellor and a young adult coach and mentor. He is a man who wears many hats and tonight we are, we are blessed, we are privileged that he has joined us in the My Faith My Womb Studios to talk about sex and intimacy i'm sure you are wondering hey what is an osofu doing in the studio talking about this yes today we are all going to find out reverend dr solomon you are please welcome to the my faith my womb thank show you. thank you very much <laughs> my yeah. next guest is a lady a woman i have admired ever since i set my eyes on her she is a banker by profession she is a minister an anointed music vessel, music minister, and she is also a seasoned counselor, young ladies mentor and coach. Tonight, I am also joined by Mrs. Abigail Owuswa Bwawa. Zof Mami, you are welcome to the Thank My you. Faith, My Womb show. Thank you very and much. And as you can see, my studio guests are maxed up because COVID-19 is still very much real. So please do take care of yourself. Now, before we get into our topic for today, let me take a few of your comments as we always do. Okay, so Pastor Abraham Kabuna Asamwa is watching as I salute yourself when he says chai, yes, because today the topic is, is something else. If you are not already on, I don't know what you are waiting for because me, I am building momentum. I'm building momentum. Let me hear your comments. Let me hear from you. Um, Josie Sechua Ashankwate says, Good evening, my faith, my womb family. A pleasant good evening to you too. So, we start, the conversation has already started. So, please, can you do all and inform a friend? Now, let me stop talking and just get right into it. Also, friend, also, mommy, once again, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Sex you. and intimacy. The topic the church always is running away from. But tonight, we are here to break it into bits and pieces for us to digest especially for the my faith my womb audience as you know um the my faith my womb audience are on a journey to receive their miracles and um sex is a very important component in trying to achieve that um you know miracle and trying to achieve that dream but this very all important subject more or less hasn't been given the required attention that should deserve in the church also for let me start from you <laughs> i mean even before marriage sex is supposed to be treated when it comes to premarital counseling but i find that a lot of couples actually don't get the 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 nitty gritties of sexual counseling also for why is premarital counseling on sex so important before a couple gets joined together in solemn um, or holy matrimony? Well, sex, sex is created by God mm. and, and for a purpose mm -hmm. and for a contest. Uh, what I found out nowadays is that before uh, uh, people come to counseling, they have already had sex. Right. And, uh, Very true for most of the times they have a misunderstanding of what they have had mm. because they go to have sex for pleasure that satisfies the flesh mm. and completely defeats the purpose mm -hmm. for which god created sex because it's supposed to serve a purpose in a contest mm -hmm. and so when you violate the integrity of god's creation mm -hmm. then you if you don't take it you travel with the same mindset right now one of the biggest challenges we have when it comes to sex, and not just sex alone, but in the context of marriage, sex plays a very important role. But there are so many other things 
that uh, are related to, uh, to counseling that counselees don't take seriously. Mm. Mm. The reason is because people are always in a hurry to marry. That's true. And so they go through the counselling session just to fulfil all requirements. <laughs> but they don't really pay attention to the details as if they are learning something to apply to their lives. Listen, why would someone go to school for go through basic school, go through secondary school, go through the university, acquire a degree, go and do a master's mm -hmm. so they can work in a particular area. Mm -hmm. And yet marriage, for which you make a vow mm -hmm. to, to be involved in till death do you part, you feel you, you don't have to learn anything about it? Mm -hmm. Or you just assume that you know? And that's, that's what people, people think they know. They assume they know. Mm -hmm. So they go into it and they misapply themselves in the, in the context. That's right. And so... It is not really that the church is not teaching. Mm. But people are not listening. Mm. They are not paying attention mm. because they feel they know or they feel they don't need it or it's just to fulfill a requirement. And I mean, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree um, less. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Already the nuggets of wisdom have started dropping. Oh, if you haven't shared this live stream i encourage you to share also is, is preparing to release more i can just sense and i can just feel it also for mommy i mean what also is saying is is um is so important and i i feel that most young people haven't even discovered the purpose of sex you know in its own regard what do you think about this i i i, I think that it is not even only the purpose of sex mm. but purpose of marriage itself that's right and so right from the word go, there is no purpose. Mm. I mean, it is happening and I must as well find myself in that pump and pageantry. That is how I call it. Mm. Of and so that really overshadows them. And so as soon as you get in, you don't know what it is that I am here for. Yes. I heard it is happening. I have come. You don't know. You have no cause. You have no purpose. You have no aim. You have no vision. You have not learned from men who are already in the journey, what it is to be married and what it's expected of me. Mm. So it is not only the sex aspect, but the whole journey of marriage. Nowadays, I get, I get, I get, I get scared when I see the young and I always pray in my spirit that I just pray that the spirit of God will direct them right from the word go because you can sit afar and tell that really, I mean, there is something in the right. Mm. People are going... The pomp and pageantry aspect of it is overshadowing everything. That's true. Meanwhile, it is a lifelong journey. God's intention is that it is separated only by death. That's true. And so if you start on a footing that is wrong, and if you don't get divine intervention, right from there, I mean, you're just staggering in the dark. Mm, mm. And, and I mean, you see that it becomes like a ripple effect. It transcends yeah. into all other areas. Mm. So it is so important if you are watching us and you are not yet married, I encourage you to take, you know, purpose very seriously when it comes to your life, when it comes to marriage. Because someone once said that next to getting born again, who you marry is actually the next most important decision. You know, so it's so important. Now, um, going a bit further to um, after the marriage, especially when... For the purpose of our conversation this evening when waiting starts because i can say that for every couple whether you have planned to wait probably a year or two you are definitely waiting to have children some time later in the marriage now for waiting couples why is sex and intimacy so important because sometimes you know we often merge the two that sex and intimacy once you have sex with somebody you are intimate but i beg to differ and can you also can you just help us you know with this i mean you started with a quote mm. and uh, that is very enlightening because uh, intimacy has got to do with devotion mm. it has got to do with a longing mm. it has got to do with service mm -hmm has got to do with self-offering right. and self-sacrifice. And so in marriage, the question of intimacy 
It's the question of what you are ready to give mm -hmm. and not what you want to take. A lot of the times we don't we don't get get it right because it's always a demand mm -hmm. and not a delivery. That's right. But if you that's what we are going to marriage. <laughs> the, 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 the main goal or objective should be what am I going to contribute to this person's life? That's right. I see uh, and hear men, I want a good woman to marry. But that's not the most important question. Mm. The most important question is, am I a good man? Mm. The woman should be like, am I a good woman? Because uh, it's not just about looking for Mr. Right. Because if you get Mr. Right and you are not Mrs. Right, exactly. everything is going to go wrong. Exactly. And that, that translates into the sexual arena as well. And so you see that uh, these people just go on having sex because they don't understand the purpose of it. That's right. That uh, it is not about orgasm mm. alone. It is also about oneness. That's right. It is also about organization. That's it. it is also about a certain divine essence mm. such that the way you go about the whole thing should glorify God. Mm -hmm. But you see, traditionally, the, our sense of sex has been stultified. Mm. And so the whole thing is poison from the beginning. This is so evil. It is bad. It's not good. It's wrong mm -hmm. and all that. And so we grow with it. Then you get married. Then all of a sudden you're supposed to uh, make a U-turn because it is good. It's nice. You must do it and all that. So your mindset is so affected. There is a faulty mindset about sex. Mm -hmm. You take it into marriage and all that. And I'm telling you, as a priest from where I sit, those who have come from backgrounds where they are Christians and uh, they are into the holiness movement and they have big challenges in their marriage when it comes to sex because they feel it is demonic. Right. I mean, right. Osofo has hit the nail right on the head. And, you know, sometimes I shudder to think because, you know, for some couples, sex should only be a procreation activity and that's it. Other than, other, other than that, all things to do with it is evil. I mean, once you want to even talk about it, you are seen in a certain light. And for waiting couples tonight, our, our theme is that every waiting couple must see sex and intimacy as a master tool. So how can a waiting couple shift from this mindset that sex is evil and just for procreation so that they lose the essence of that enjoyment you were talking about that that glorification aspect that presence you know so mommy um, I, I, when we talk about things that are evil they are things you can't find in the bible scripture says the man and the woman were naked and they were not ashamed not ashamed right so i don't see where evil comes in mm. here and so right from the word go, you must get it that this is God's intention created for pleasure and for the two of us to become one. That is the only way. I don't know if there's any other way Reverend is here. Mm. Because it's like you have a deposit of each other in us. That's it. And that is the only way you can become one. So right from the word go, there is nothing evil about this. Scripture speaks about it. And so there is nothing evil. If you are a waiting couple, I, I, I always tell my young friends when I meet them that, you know what, when you get married, just close your ears to the greetings, afisise, afisise, mm -hmm. that we are known to. Even when you have children, afisise, they are expecting something. And it, it doesn't make sense to me for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But then that is the time to build the intimacy. Mm -hmm. That is the time to bond together. That is the time to know your body, each other's body, and how you get inside each other. I have always told people that I wish I knew this. Because when I married, there were no children. You don't have children. You have your room for yourself because you don't have children. There's no house help. There's nothing. You have all your privacy, your washroom, your kitchen, everywhere. Just explore it. Hmm. Know yourself. Because some of the women especially you go in there and as they are naive you don't know what to do but then both of you are in a new venture you are going to learn how to progress and so that is the time to explore each other it's a scripture 
explore each other so that you can because if you don't get it right trust me when you get the children start coming in the attention is divided that's true and then you start complaining but from the very day you started the journey that was when you need to open the book and start learning and writing mm. and becoming a master of your bedroom mm. Mm. i like that I, I, nobody is out there i was listening to a speaker and then she said that see when we go to school they don't teach us how to lie in bed how to open your legs how to look into the ceiling and do <laughs> whatsoever that all that they teach us is how not to get pregnant that's true and then um sexually transmitted diseases and so when it comes to sex you must explore mm. in a godly manner mm -hmm. with the intention i love also for saying that in the context it is in marriage marriage so you must explore it it is also another divine assignment that mm -hmm. you need it is not only for the children what if god never had the intention for you to have a baby That's he created it. that for you to enjoy don't abuse that mm. don't let god's work go waste mm. please ah i love that don't abuse that don't let god's work just go to waste like that tonight there's something happening here and for the waiting couples that you are watching please tonight i hope you are setting your mind right because the night is still very young and some things must happen anyway that's that's for another day but let me say thank you to divine media hd and divine media online tv for powering this great movement that my faith my womb show we are all about telling our stories we are here to encourage you we are here to hold your hand on this waiting journey that god is not a man that will lie but wisdom is necessary and needed for this waiting journey and that is why this season season two we have come fully packed with topics and you know things to just set your mind on course for this waiting journey and tonight is just one of those nights and we are treating sex and intimacy every waiting couples master tool if you haven't shared the broadcast please do share the live stream and let someone know that we are live if you are not commenting i would like to know you tell me what are you learning so far or so far and not of my mate abigail they are here let us know your questions regarding sex and intimacy because i know that this is an area that we do not pay attention to and waiting couples are weeping because sex has been seen as a chore now back to osofo osofo i i find that personally you know whilst we were waiting it got to a time i realized that i was simply tired of the word sex i just did not want to hear the word sex because i am tired after a hard day's work i'm already frustrated the journey of waiting has frustrated me and i'm frustrated and i come and you also want to add your own to it now i'm speaking this way because this is the sentiment of most of the waiting couples and i dare say for a lot of the women they feel more this way also for you are a man what should a waiting wife or, or what, what should be and the expectation of a waiting wife from her husband and then i'll take the reverse from us of mommy okay you see first of all uh is this a one two seven verse three that says that children are heritage from the lord yes and we need to understand that the fundamental purpose of marriage is not procreation mm -mm. the fundamental purpose of marriage is not procreation i need my audience to understand this point very very much because it is so important the fundamental purpose of marriage is mutual companionship mm. helpfulness and care now that is why you only get married to somebody you love right unless you have ulterior motives mm. and if it is true that you love the person you don't love the person because of the baby the person is going to produce that's right you love the person because of who the person is and a particular divine purpose the person is going to serve mm. in your life mm. Mm. you see because you can I, I know somebody who gave birth to six children. They all died. Wow. They still delivered, but the children died. Over a period of time, they all died. Wow. But the man and the woman were still together. Wow. And I say all the time, I like my children to know. My children know the difference between 
my wife and their mother. <laughs> when they come around and I say, I'm talking to my wife, they know they need to leave. <laughs> and when they come, to, they come around and I say, I'm talking to your mother, can't you say I'm talking to your mother? They will sit around. Mm. But the moment I say, I say, I'm talking to my wife, they know the difference. They will leave. Wow. You see? Because I made vows to her, not them. Mm. They are products of the vows I made to her. And so she's my priority. They mm. are my mere, mere responsibility. Wow. But she's my priority. Revelation. So they can never take precedent over my wife. Never. Mm. Nobody will. You see, because I love her. And I got married to her. Mm. And I said, till death do us, but I, I didn't say that to my children. That's right. And so uh, I must build that love. I must grow it. I must water it. I must nurture it. I must prune it. And when I go out there and I'm frustrated, I've done all the work of ministry and all that, and, and I'm tired. People have brought on all the drama that they bring on <laughs> and all that. And I go home and I see my wife. This is bone of mm, my bone mm, and flesh, flesh of, my, of flesh. my flesh. That thing must not die. That which triggers that thing from a man should never die. Mm. If it is dying, then it means that something very significant is missing mm. in the whole union. So if you're a man and you're with a woman and the woman is getting tired of sex, there are a few questions you need to ask yourself. Mm. Why is she getting tired of mm -hmm. it? Is it because of the way I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. Or is it because there's a psychological problem mm. over there? If it's a psychological problem, then you need to know how to go about it, whether you can resolve it yourself mm. or you need an external help. Help. Because when a woman feels that, listen, all my mates are giving birth and I'm not, and, and, and she thinks that, listen, the reason I'm having this sex is because I want to conceive, then it becomes a chore. Yes. But if she knows that, listen, uh, yes, I, 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 have not, I have not brought forth yet. I'm not pregnant yet. But listen, God gave you to me for us to enjoy this thing. And mm. I, want, I want to serve you with it. I, want to, I, want to, I, I just want you to feel it, to enjoy it. I want to give you myself. Mm. So there's a way even a, a husband can make a wife not feel that sex is a chore. That's oh, yes. Oh, yes. Saying. Of course. Of course. Wow. Yes. And because at the end of the day, it's something to celebrate. Mm. But if you can't something like a punishment because mm. you have missed the purpose of it, then it would, it would be like a chore. Mm. But it's supposed to be something you enjoy. Like just the way you go, you see, and there's a whole contest to it. I know you want to go to the army, so you go and come. Because <laughs> uh, uh, there, there, there's a whole, a whole ambience to, I, the, I, to the You thing. know, Lady yeah. Abigail, sex is beautiful. Sex is beautiful. Now, I mean... I, I struggle sometimes to, you know, um, um, appreciate the fact that in as beautiful as it is, you still have issues when it comes to waiting, like I talked about with Osofo. It being a show. Now, as a woman, we do so much within a day that we forget ourselves. We become stressed out. And that also adds to us seeing this as an external activity and we don't even give it the priority it deserves because we feel that other things we are doing are more important now when you are on the waiting journey it becomes the reverse rather sometimes you begin to time your ovulation and you begin to become a, a, an ovulation <laughs> police officer it's time it's time it's time the egg will drop today there you have to do something it will drop today what's of mommy how can waiting mothers be at peace and not not grapple with you know ovulation uh, uh, calculation and all those things well i i i think that this procreation thing we should get it right straight that mm. it is divine right i believe that no matter what the doctors are doing today they are in vitro and whatever I'm sure they cannot explain into details when they input whatever they did together, what happens and the baby comes. Mm. So as waiting couple, we should get a straight that it is God. Mm. The moment he decides it happens. That's right. And so when it's time for, I, I, I don't even get it and I don't see where this comes in that I'm stressed out. I'm for, I mean that moment of intimacy is the time for you to relax after a stressful day right if it so happens right 
if the man understands you and see how sensitive and where it is to stimulate you, it is no more a spontaneous thing. Mm. You need to, it's, it's, it's responsive. Mm. So you need to stimulate and then it's work out on your mind. So I don't see why you come in and say, I am stressful, I am this. Then it means that the man is not bringing the woman to the stage of enjoying that pleasure, mm. that original intention God had for it. It must not be a stress. Mm. At any time, any moment, wherever, whenever possible, <laughs> it must and be available. If you say at any time, any moment, where, where should, you know, within the house, where should couples be able to express themselves? I used to, you know? I used to tell my, my people somewhere in the office and they laugh it off, but <laughs> I, I meant what I was saying, that you see, we waste the houses that we, we, we spend our money to mm. rent, the spaces. Oh yes, sometimes your children are out, everybody is out, you have your kitchen, you have your washroom, mm -hmm. you have your hall, you have even your compound, your wall is so high, nobody <laughs> sees what is happening in there. Both of you are one for each other. Mm. There is no shyness, there is nothing. Make use of your rooms. You should be able to read your husband. As soon as I walk to the washroom and sometimes he walks in, I can tell something is happening. I must condition my mind because... I'm not going to be a receptacle. I must enjoy. Mm. No. We are not going to be a receptacle. You must enjoy. I must enjoy. That so is profound. I will condition my mind that I'm not going to exert energy for nothing. Mm. At the end of the day, I must see that I am refreshed. Mm. I feel good. Mm. I feel like a woman. The original woman God created. That's it. So work out on your mind and tell yourself that this is a man that I have gone to say I love. Mm. Everything about him I love. And you see, I am here for him. He is here for me. Everything about me, including sex, is for him, mm. for us to enjoy. I was just telling my husband that, you know what? Very soon, these boys will go. It will be left with the two of us. So we must let it work even when they are here. So that when they are gone, we'll still be enjoying. Mm. You must enjoy. It's for you to enjoy. Wow. Wow. Let me just take a few comments because I know that uh, 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 online viewers are intrigued about tonight's topic okay so there's a comment that says when you see it as a job the mood changes it's more psychological than it looks right from kweku or mari okay ellen clotty says you should enjoy each other's company i agree with you ellen um araba says i'm not going to be a receptacle i will enjoy be that's it araba i love that she says, I must enjoy. Okay, Kweku says that receptor is not door, so please don't be a receptor. Don't be a receptacle simply because you have the ability to receive and, and you know, fertilize and make it. Please, please, please. We are not, we are not. Uh, uh, somebody said, say, Yejai, please, receptacle in Jejienu. This year, season two, Yejai, we are going to enjoy each other. We are going to have sex not because we want children. We are going to have sex because we love each other and we are grateful that God gave us this mystery to celebrate together. Let me just say thank you to Divine Media HD for powering this great movement that my faith my womb show if you are watching me and you'd like to be a partner for the show please do not hesitate to contact us on zero triple five nine three seven seven six eight let's take a short breather and when we come back we get into the in totals what some of the please i'm not even going to say anything if you just don't want to miss stay glued to your screen we'll be right back Really beloved, I am excited to come your way this Sunday with another exciting episode of the My Faith, My Room Show. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. Am I going to lose this baby? It looks like I'm going to lose mm. this baby. And you could feel the movement still. Mm. The baby wasn't dead. You understand? You could feel the movements, but you're on the verge of just losing this baby. Mm. So she came home and I was still doing my studio work and then I when I go to ask her, can you feel the baby moving now? She said no. Mm. She, that's when she has slept for a while. So I was like, don't worry, tomorrow morning. And this was in the eighth month. Yeah, seventh month. Seventh month. Yeah. And then they called me and uh, my wife to the doctor's office. And then they told us that unfortunately um, 
a seven month old baby um, that was a boy then uh, it's, it's no longer alive so, oh my god um, and I went to watch the lifeless body of my son lying down and um, um, she he was Welcome back to the My Faith, My Womb show. And before we went for that short break, we were talking about enjoying sex. Now, my guests in the studio are going to break it down. We just have a few minutes before we, you know, wrap it up. And before we end tonight's show, we have an amazing testimony. So if you are waiting, couple, and you are watching, I don't want you to miss that particular segment but before we get into that segment briefly i want osofu to just osofu waiting fathers are watching us osofu give us three tricks on how a man should make his wife happy in the bedroom especially when they are in that you know arena of waiting Whatever happens in the bedroom begins outside the bedroom. Mm. And one of the problems with a waiting couple is that sometimes uh, we like to go to the hospital to find out what is wrong with us if we are not getting a child and all that. If the problem is with the woman, but the woman is not making any serious effort mm -hmm. in the estimation of the man mm -hmm. to help resolve the problem, it kills the job mm. for, for intimacy and all that. If it's the man, and the man is not pulling his way. He will not go to the hospital. He wouldn't want to take his medications and all that. It destroys the intimacy. I mean, uh, you speak to your wife anyhow, you speak to your husband anyhow, you destroy the intimacy. You, you, you don't give surprises. You cannot come to the house and say, oh, I got you this. Mm. You, 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 I mean, there's no life in you. Mm. That destroys intimacy. And so, so it, 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 it's not just about entering into the bedroom. It's about... Uh, it's about what you do outside the bedroom. Mm. See, yesterday I was driving, and then I don't know which radio station, but you know they do this countdown, and uh, uh, they played a particular song, and they said it's a Ghanaian musician who sang it. I'm not, I'm not advertising the person on your uh, thing, but the song <laughs> was nice. So this is called Jackie, but it's spelled G A K I E. Okay. You know that's not my general music, right, so I don't right. go there. But the person was singing, my heart day for you, mm -hmm. my mind day for mm -hmm. you. And I thought, no, listen, this music is so cool. Uh, so I sent it to my wife and I said, listen, I requested this song for you. Uh, and, and it's a cool music. And she was like, oh, I love it. I said, yeah, that's it. When you, you do something like that, you are, Spontaneous, spontaneity. you are preparing the way for something mm. magical. So, so, so you don't go now begging and saying, it will happen. <laughs> It would happen. With now, no apology. We also need to reorient ourselves by mm. so many things. Right. Because we have demonized sex from the beginning, traditionally, uh, people go into their marriages with that uh, negative orientation. Right. And it affects their uh, uh, attitude towards it. That's why, you see, there are people who, who feel that if you have sex in certain ways, you are evil. Mm -hmm. You yes. are a demon. And I say, mm -hmm. now listen, when I'm counseling uh, people, I tell them, it is not for the bad boys. It's for us who are married. It's not for the bad girls. It's not for the prostitutes. No, they are stealing it. They are thieves. When they do it that way, it's for us. We own it. We have the patent right. We must do it like that. Not them. So when we leave it for them to do it, uh, uh, we are being irresponsible. Because there's something God has given to you to use. And then somebody who, who hasn't got the right to do it is using it better than you. No, that's not it. Those who are not married who are doing all those things, no, they are stealing it. We must do it like that. Toss yourselves up and down. Toss to yourselves and up. And all that. Do. <laughs> Listen. Please, if marriage, this is an Marriage it's is not in heaven. Self flow. In heaven, there is no marriage. Mm. There will be no sense. Mm. This is the only place where you can do it. This life too is short. <laughs> Why don't you just do it and do it and do it and do it well? And your strength. When you get to heaven, make the, the angels salute, salute you. you. Ah, when you got this opportunity, use it so well. 
You don't allow anything to come between you. <laughs> Unfaithfulness can also destroy her. Right. The, and so if you're a man and you want that, do things well outside the home, mm -hmm. outside the bedroom. Also be faithful. And then your wife is supposed to be your treasure mm. if you're a man. You see, there is nothing any man wants in his or her wife that he cannot get. Mm. Whatever you want in a woman is in your wife. Fortunately, anything at all can be made up in a woman or a man. So, so long as, you see, my wife is not fat. I don't need her to be fat. Somebody is fatter than her. Somebody is taller than her and all that. But everything that a woman has is in her. Mm. Now, you cannot draw virtue from what you don't place value on. Mm. Mm. True. So if you place value on your wife, you can draw virtue from her. Mm. But we are not doing that. And we are always looking somewhere else. Looking the for grass, what we don't have. Uh, you see, but, but we have it. Looking for what we have, but we have refused, refused to, see to see. Because we have it. no place value, value on, on, it. on the, on the thing. The grass is not green on, on the, the other, other side. side. It is only green where people take responsibility to water it. Mm. So if you take responsibility to water it, it will become green. Mm. A lot of the times, what we see out there, we have not done any work mm. on, so we want to go in for it. When mm. we go to that one too, because we are irresponsible, we will not be able to manage it, mm. not be able to take care of it, we will not be able to preserve it and keep it. So men must be responsible. Mm. And if you are responsible, oh women, women are responsible. They respond. So the moment you are doing the right things, you won't ask. It will come on magically. Mm. I'm telling you. <laughs> it will be fire for fire. Fire for fire. Please, man, I, I just wish that somebody would share this for our, our fathers in waiting to listen to these deep words of wisdom. It will be fire for fire if we are doing the right things. Also, mommy, give us three, three areas that as waiting mothers, waiting wives, that we should focus on to please our husbands and build intimacy. I, I think that Osafu said something so exciting that, you know, it's not fire for fire alone. It, it will be an open door policy. Mm. You can walk in and out at any time. So long as you do the external things right, as Osafu right. said. Because I don't see why you, how you disrespect me as a woman. Your action tells me that you have no value for me as a wife in your life. It's like I am in the dark around you. And in the night, you want me to open up 360. Mm. You That's make me feel like I'm a sex, or a sex machine. But then, if there is peace around, if you let people know that, you know, this is the woman I have gone for as a wife. I cherish her as such. I love her as the Bible says I should love her. Her comfort is my interest and her welfare is all I seek for. You, you don't need to talk. As soon as you make the sign, I understand. You just don't need to talk. So for, for our women, let, let me say to our women waiting that men love to be respected. They love submission. That is what the Bible says. And so in everything, no matter who it is, mm. I was telling somebody, no matter whether your husband is an ice cream seller, you knew that and you went for him, that you want to marry him as a husband, mm. it means that you are ready to submit to him as such, That's whether it. you are the president or whatever. Irrespective of where he comes from, irrespective of his academic background and level, you must submit to him because he is the priest of the home. And so if you submit to your husband, I, I don't see why you should go and beg him. Sometimes when I'm expecting that it happens and it doesn't happen, he may be so tired, he's sleep over. What is that? So, Charlie, Andra, sorry, why? That is the respect that must be there. You must live with That's the person right. to the extent that when he disappoints you, he knows that, Charlie, I'm expecting something. You didn't do it. What is happening? I didn't marry a Roman father. <laughs> having sex i didn't i didn't marry a roman father so please you can't be sleeping like that you when must you wake have, up you must wake see, up see 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 you see when we got married uh, <laughs> our wedding night the first evening 
I was sleeping uh, and snoring. Wake up. Uh, this, this oh, Reverend, wake, wake up. up. Wake up. <laughs> this is my old man. And you know, this is somebody who is holy and all that. So, actually, I was, the man, he said, wake up. I said, yeah. wake up for what? Wake up. Oh, wake really? Up. <laughs> you must wake up. You, you must wake up. Wake up. You didn't marry a Roman father. No, no, no. I said, oh, yes. I once said that, actually. I didn't marry her. Hey, go and tell your father. I didn't marry a Roman father. <laughs> He was right there in the room. Yes, I was communicating what is yeah. becoming a bother. That's you true. See, we have failed to open up simply because some of the men have been have become like girls and strangers around us. Mm. But they are supposed to be our friends, mm. our very best friends. Mm. When he sees you in the dress, he can tell you, these and these are showing. As some cannot. And I wonder how they are living. But if everything is right, a woman, live everything right. Cherish him, make sure his socks, his boxers, everything is ready. The food, it's JJ, you are up to it. If you don't know, go to YouTube, download things. Do it for him, let him eat and sweat, and you can see that he has energy. Mm. You will not waste that energy in the night <laughs> or in the afternoon <laughs> when they are done. You must open up, some sort. I mean, I think we have gone past the age of the cross. Mm. Please the hit the nail on the head. Floor. I am not fat, I thank God, because so I can twist and turn. That's right. If my head is down, I'm cool. Mm. Because if I have to take control, I would also make sure that you tend to my satisfaction. That's true. And then let me tell my women, let us not act. Let us not be hypocrites. When the men are satisfied, they are usually like, it, it does happen. When they are satisfied, you see them relaxing. For me, you lie. <laughs> you will rise up. Because I must also, also be enjoy. So be a man and finish the race. Yes, you be, you better rise. It, you will rise up and cross the finish oh, line. Oh yes, you must. <laughs> it should be a mutual thing. So get involved. Don't let it look like I'm not a bad girl. It is in scripture. What are you talking about? That's right. If and that, that is where I feel that as a, as a church, because for the purpose of the the show being a Christian oriented program i feel that it is one area that we need to be paying more attention it is because, to because i think it is because when the church opens up too much we tend to abuse it that's and true. we sudden god that's true that's true because he keeps that for a time he knows that that time you can you know when you're stealing something you're so much in a, a rush in the haste to go but if it is all yours you, you lie it around time. it for any time any sometimes you, you can you can even tell that you are eating into the night oh i have to wake up at two and you don't mind you have to wake up at three and you don't mind even when you do you have a real good intimacy time and you sleep somebody should tell me i'm lying you sleep like a baby you sleep and like you a need baby to be it's actually Pumped. healing it, yeah. it is healing we oh, see maybe i'm not i need to talk about the benefits of sex itself mm. to if you are watching us let me say this if you are watching and you like us to have part two of this session sex and intimacy please type it in the comment section part two part two <laughs> also please continue you see because for waiting couples uh satisfactory sex is very important mm. when sure. you are jittery and you are eager mm. psychologically your recesses go down, go down. Mm. so it actually delays conception wow. when you do it as a chore because your your system resists mm. that because of your eagerness and all that the You're tension anxious. yes and the tension the anxiety destroys everything but if it is normal it is cool properly organized you are enjoying yourself your mind is free you, you say, I want to gift you myself, you gift me yourself, and you go that way. It aids the process of conception. And you see, I wanted to draw attention to something in the book of Luke. Somebody like Elizabeth, who delivered at that old age, John the Baptist, they were still having sex. Mm. Mm. And who was the one having yeah. sex with Elizabeth? A Bam. priest who goes into the Holy of Holies. Bam. Are you with me? Mm. That conception did not come because the Holy Ghost entered into Elizabeth. Because even at that age, the Bible says that they were stricken in years. They were devout Christians. Are you with me? Yes. They were devout Christians. They were waiting for a child. The child hadn't come. Their mates had given birth. They had grown old and all that. I mean, but they were still having sex. The holy man and the holy wife, they were still having sex. So and you enjoying that you themselves. Are, you are young you know, fortified, you have strength. I mean, you don't have an excuse. Instead of executing, you are there doing some child play. No, no, no. Uh, you, don't, supposed, you don't have an excuse. It, it's not supposed it's, to be safe. And, you know, you, you will end up not enjoying and then get the pleasure it is meant, meant to give you because that's right. 
you are not consumed in the moment. Mm. It is a time you must be consumed in. Everything is, I mean, nothing matters to you. But here is the case there is a real man around you mm. and you are thinking of a baby. You hope this instance will bring. Your mind is not on what is happening. happening. You are absent minded. And so that is it. And so you will not enjoy it. Yes. You will not enjoy it. Oh, tonight I, I wish we had more time. I wish we had more time. But let's briefly touch on this. Um, most of all, when is it ideal to seek therapy? Especially for, you know, couples who have gone down this road and i mean sometimes it's even difficult to talk about it with your spouses you know sometimes um you don't even know or understand the mood swings of your husband or your wife and you don't know when to approach her and it rather draws you back you feel you can resort to other things to pornography you know to so many other um things so at what point does a couple come together and say okay let's seek therapy you see the moment the moment you realize there is something wrong with your marriage or your sex life, you need to seek help. The problem is that we are not learning enough mm. about marriage and about people. You see, it is human behavior. Mm. And some of those reactions are natural. Mm. The mood swings with certain women are natural. That's true. Certain things that they encounter, they are natural. But the moment you have an understanding of what is happening then you know what you can do to manage the mood swing that's right so that the moment you some some of the, there are some women the moment they are entering into their menses then the, the their mood begins to swing the ovulation period yeah. especially that is when rather you see that there is a mood swing they are angry exactly and uh, everything annoys and that is them. when conception should have actually yes. taken place you know so that moment critical moment is actually wasted because the man has not paid attention to the thing to try and seek understanding yes. as to why the woman is doing the woman is not doing that because she's disrespectful she's not doing that because she doesn't love you yes. she's not doing that because she's a devil it is something that is natural yes. it needs understanding and once you understand it you can use it for your own benefit mm. so if you you are like ah this is not my wife but i have is a, and you need to pay attention to details. It is at this time of the month that she behaves like a wife. Sometimes they, she may not even communicate to you for you to even know it's a mood swing. Sometimes she herself may not even be aware that, it's a that mood she's swing, even uh, near, exactly. Uh -huh. And then if you've been paying attention, instead of uh, reacting to it, you can respond to it. And so when people are having mood swings, the mood swings can always be managed. Mm. They can always be managed, and uh, I mean for the better. Because my wife tells me that it is at that moment that she actually needs me to massage her feet, uh, do uh, scrub the bathroom. She needs me in the kitchen with her and all that. And once you enter into the kitchen, you are cooking. Whatever, whatever swinging swings off. It's, mm. it's just vanishes just it, like it, that. Yes. And so if if we if we steady the people we are with because we love them. Yeah. And we always want to uh, comfort them. Because when you are taking the body, you are asked, would you live with this woman as a wedded wife? Wedded wife. Would you love her? Would you comfort her? Okay. Would you honor and keep her? And forsaking all of this, keep faithfully only to her, so long as you both shall live. And you said yes. And you are not comforting her. Mm. And you are using an excuse. Mm. There's also an excuse. Because excuses are grace in which opportunities are buried. Mm, that's right. So this thing is an opportunity seize it mm. seize the moment make good use of it how can mm. i turn this thing around mm. and then make uh, i mean uh, some good profits out of it so you know this is not the way the woman is this is not the woman you married yes this is not the woman you married there's a reason why this is happening so what can you do to bring out the real woman you married mm. you need to help her instead of condemning her and sometimes that's the way men are and and you see that instead of uh, improving their yeah. spouses they start looking elsewhere. elsewhere. And that is man. where the extramarital affairs begin. You are not you a know. man. You are not being a man. Because real men make women better. That's it. That's what real men do. Real men make women better. And Osofo has this book, 
not by prayer not by <laughs> prayer and if you you if you read excerpts yeah. of that book you'd see that a lot of the things he is talking about is not by prayer but you need knowledge so if you like to you know get a copy of that book just contact me after the show and we can make that arrangement for you it's been an exciting night let me just take a few messages before i go to sofuma may kate says that kate agbaba says true and father abraham was also satisfying mama sarah <laughs> even at old age i agree with you kate i agree with you all the way from south africa we greet you south africans um in tobia rizvana says chai who is this man of god he is speaking sense and truth. He is the Honorable Reverend Dr. Solomon Norte. Go to his Facebook page and search for him, Reverend Dr. Solomon Norte, and just send him a friend request. Patricia Ofori Dakwa says, very true. Ellen is just affirming what uh, uh, Reverend said, that real men make women better. Oh, tonight, I wish we wouldn't end. But as I said, season two, we have goodies packed for you i'll come back for some mommy to continue from where also left off but let's take our testimony for tonight all the way from nigeria we have an amazing testimony stick and stay we'll be back people used to call me Byron before they used to insult me but i thank god today that god embarrassed me with five babies at the go two boys three girls what else can I ask from God? I really, really thank God for this great gift that He gave to me. I got married 2014. So we waited for like six years plus. During the period of our waiting for the fruit of the womb, a lot of things happened. In fact, some people insulted me on several occasions. I was embarrassed. But I thank God today that God embarrassed me with five babies at once. In fact, when I first run a, a PT test, I saw it was positive. I was like, God. Then, as time goes on, I went to uh, lab to run a scan. From there, they discover that it's four babies. Say, so, wow, I was very, very happy. And at the same time, I was thinking that four babies are the goal. How am I going to take care of them? Because of the financial situation of the country and the family as well. <laughs> I was thinking that, God, how am I going to go about this situation? I called my husband, I told him, it was like, ah, 4K, ah, that are we going to do it? I said, well, I don't know, but God is on the throne, he will see us true. But to my surprise, when I went there again on my next appointment, they run a scan, they now discover that it's five babies. I'm a civil servant, although it was just some few years ago. I started doing that work in Benin, uh, rubber research. I see, say, I married, I'll be, have, uh, my wife has been having issue of pregnancy. We have moved from one hospital, from one hospital to another, doing all kinds of tests, series of tests, and the scan. And all. The doctor will always tell us that there's no big problem there, there's no serious problem there that doesn't make her not to be pregnant. Many people have stigmatized us. There was a time a woman able told my wife that uh, she couldn't be born, she couldn't deliver a baby. They all quarreled that day and all. But by the grace of God, uh, early last year, my wife told me that uh, she went to hospital. The doctor said she's pregnant. And he, she called me because I was in Benin that this is what the doctor has told her. I said, ah, that is great. But that, the, the other time she went to scan, the doctor told her that they are seeing four, four, four babies. They are seeing four babies in her womb. I said, wow, that is great. But at the same time, I was also taken down by the hardship of the country that how we're going to take care of all those babies or not. So the second week of it, she went to scan again. 
That's when they told her that it's not evil for a gate, that is five. Even the daughter has to even call the consultant to come and sit by himself. And the consultant check it and discover that really it's five. And we thank you God. At the same time, we're also thinking how we are going to cope. December 8th, when I went for antenatal clinic, so they had, my consultant asked me to stay back in the hospital last week, to be precise. So and I say okay. Even to the extent you are like, if I didn't agree to stay back, if I said that I want to force myself to go home, then I need to sign a letter and undertaking. Then they will not be the one to uh, attend to me again. I need to find another hospital apart from last week that will go and deliver my baby. So I don't have a choice than to stay. So that I stay back in the last week. I thank God that I'm alive today and my babies, they are alive, two boys and three girls. I want to thank every Nigerian that has shown concern since my wife gave birth with my landlord. Also, my landlord is the one that is always giving me, it's very cool, anytime I want to take my people to the clinic. Now, God has a us with blessing by giving, by giving us five babies once, two boys still guess. After we have spent CCS Plus, uh, we are begging the Nigeria, the way mainly Nigeria, to help us for the upkeep of our babies. We are, we are, we are uh, soliciting uh, help from the Lagos State Governor, uh, Samuel Sam Olu, for the upkeep of our five babies. Now, my wife just delivered on the 18th in Lagos State Teaching University Hospital, Ikeja. We are also begging, uh, seeking for, for help through my state governor. Uh, God will not for the occupy of our baby. We are also seeking for help from the Osho State Governor, where my wife is from. You saw well, and I pray that this is your portion in Jesus' name. <laughs> Reverend will pray for all waiting couples who are watching. Some of you are dumbfounded. Yes, this is season two. Season two, we are going to even be featuring My Faith, My Room products and showcase their own testimonies in Jesus' name. If you are watching me and you need prayer support, do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Our contact numbers will be on your screen. If you have a friend, if you know somebody who is in need of prayer, support, counseling, encouragement, please, we are here for you. We are in this journey together. Let me say thank you to Divine Media HD and Divine Media Online TV. If you are a church, you are a corporate entity and you would like your multimedia department to take another level or to take another, you know, to, 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 to be apt, please, they are your go-to. Divine Media is your one-stop shop for all your multimedia needs. If you'd like to, you know, procure equipment for your live streaming, especially now that we have all migrated onto the virtual platform, please do not hesitate to get in touch with Divine Media HD, reliving the experience in heavenly definition. We have the HD class that will be coming live very, very soon. So if you are um, a church multimedia head, if you like to know more about multimedia, if you like to be a media evangelist, as we call it, and you like to know more about 
offering your multimedia giftings in the body of Christ, in the church, and even for your own business. Kindly look out for the dates when the dates are finally out or when the flyers are out. C proudly organized by Divine Media HD, led by its CEO, Mr. Theophilus Forson. You can send Divine Media HD messages, questions, anything about the upcoming HD class tonight has been amazing and before we went for that testimony we were just wrapping up about you know therapy and how to spice up so i just want us of mommy to give us her final words um you know just in a nutshell everything we have discussed and just give us tips to spice the bedroom tips to spice the bedroom to make it more intimate and appealing and attractive after a long day's work to make sure that our sex lives are enjoyable. Then Osofu will also come in and say his last words and pray for all waiting couples and we will end tonight's show. So, my okay, me. okay, my waiting couples, my beautiful ladies out there. Sometimes you think that you are inadequate. But Osofu rightly said that everything that you need to have as a woman, you have it. Mm -hmm. I was once asking somebody that if somebody's bottles is flat, how do you call it? Is it not the same bottles? <laughs> if it is big, is it not the same bottles? Right. There's no other name. So you have everything, whether it's big or small. Package yourself well. Know your worth as a woman in your room. Take charge. Don't let the room be scattered. When you are in the mood, create it in your room. When he enters, he can sense that, yes, there is fire here. And we are going to pray. Just set the ball rolling. We always leave the it for the men. And so when they are tired, they are frustrated, they also sleep. Meanwhile, those are the times that they need you also to wake them up, to push them, to tell them that, you know what? I've got what you need to relax, all that you need to just freshen up the stress and everything be a woman of your man there is no other better woman out there for him than you you have everything you can do it i always tell people that you know let my husband go and see all those things as soon as i open the gate and he sees me he forgets about all mm -hmm. i am the only person that comes to his mind and that is what you should aim at look fresh look good look like a woman god has created and then make your home a happy place for them if they are stressed out, as soon as he enters home, he can feel that he has come home. And trust me, you would enjoy that home. You would enjoy sex. I mean, you, you would enjoy when you are so tired. You can tell that there is nothing good I can ever ask for but such a moment with my husband. Finally, I would want to say that all those pleasures that we are talking of ends here. There is a day that the owner of this pleasure, the space we are occupying, shall appear. It is not enough for you to be a waiting couple and a churchgoer. You must be born again. You must be a Christian and live like Christ, for heaven is real. Thank you. Heaven is real. You must be born again. Osofo, your final words. Okay, so uh, uh, my word goes to the men. You spoke about how women get stressed because of so many things they do. It is not written anywhere that the kitchen is for the women alone. It's not written anywhere that the women should be the only people laying the bed. The women should be the only people scrubbing the bathroom. The women should be the only people sweeping the room. It's not written anywhere. So the men should help the women. Mm. It, that, you see, that's what men do. That's what real men do. Real men work mm. because the Lord gave work to Adam. Mm. Real men work. So in my house, I do the laying of the bed and everything and all that. Wow. When I light the candle, you know that. Yeah. Yeah, fire for fire. Uh, electrifying <laughs> the atmosphere. You know, so you, you need to take charge because they are human beings as well. You all go to work and come. And you expect the woman alone to be in the kitchen and no, go and support her. Mm. Sweep the place. La Wash. Love languages. You now, know, you I, must, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you see, those who do not know, who do not have the real understanding, they are just there and they talk. Even if she has washed her panties, 
intentionally go and take them and watch them again in, and, and, and let her come and see that today you watched because you wanted to see her wear something you have watched. Ah! What are you talking about? So we, 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 need to, we need to learn how to spice out. I mean, that's awful. Cool. We have to do, do something. Too. Do something. We have to. So far, we Sometimes the men are too dull. Too That's why. Dull. Too dull. Yeah. I, I, they I, just I, can't create the atmosphere. So it, it, is, it is true. I, I remember those times that we got married. We just, there were no children. I mean, so we can spend the whole time for ourselves. We come out like 8 o'clock. I go to the kitchen. He picks the broom and the brush and he sweeps. He sweeps. Oh. When I put the laundry in the machine, he ha goes up there to hang them. Mm. I mean, so in this case, what stress do I have to say that I cannot open, open up, up, practice my open door policy? It is not possible. And the person comes and says, I'm stressed. Massage, hey. <laughs> massage, hey. Massage. Oh, Ma man. The massage card, they are tired, so we need to talk about them. Listen, it's awful. People are calling for part three of my, <laughs> my Faith, My Womb episode two. And we have to, we have, you know, I love my faithful family so much that we have to find time and create this. But I'm excited because, you know, in April, the My Faith, My Womb show will be one. Yay! So <laughs> we are praying that, um, you know, just keep your ears to the ground. We will be lining up a lot of interesting activities. And I'm sure definitely we can have a software and of mommy come in. Ginger us one more time because these issues are important and needful i'll let us all pray and then i also give my final closing remarks somebody is asking i can send somebody asking that hey eh, the, the host she has talked that she she's not saying anything yeah i also share my own i'll give my own <laughs> tips my own 411 before we end the show so you let me let us all do his honest and pray and i'll take it over from there beloved in the lord you've heard that this world is not our home mm -hmm. we'll leave this place and go but of course, there are immediate things. But the immediate things are not more important than the ultimate mm -hmm. things. So let's fix our gaze on the ultimate things. However, if you are trusting God for a child, I've been organizing baby festivals. Mm -hmm. And we've received so many testimonies of people who have been trusting the Lord for children. Some 11 years, some 15 years, some 19 years that the Lord is blessed. A 57-year-old woman giving birth to twins and mm -hmm. all that. We have all those testimonies on screen. We have them in videos. Um, so the Lord can also answer your prayer. Yes. But it must always be at God's time. Mm. It must always be in the will of the Lord. So place your hand on your tummy if, if you are trusting God for a child. Or if you have a bottle of water, I'll be glad. Or sachet water. Just take it. Let's use that as point of contact and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're a miracle working mm. God. And children are a heritage from you. Today we speak, O oh Lord, to every manhood and every womb that Lord is deficient, O oh God, in propagating or producing or procreating. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let the vitality of these organs be activated in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that the renewing power of your presence will cause an activation now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we declare that just as it was said about Elizabeth, that he, she that was barren is carrying a child. Let it be said about you, that you who had waited on the Lord for a child had gotten a double for your anticipation. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that fertility will be injected and that conception will take place and there will be safe delivery and the children will grow in knowledge, wisdom, and stature, and you have favor with God and with men, and you become a blessing to the nations of the world. May this testimony be heard in your home. May this testimony be heard in your home. Someone called Elizabeth who is crying right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. May you receive that child. May you receive that child. Because your, your husband, Henry, walked away from home just about two months ago because of the childlessness. But I pray in the name of Jesus, Jesus that he's going to return on Thursday. Jesus. And when he returns, may the Lord God answer your prayer. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we command the mind of Henry, Lord, to be fine-tuned in Jesus' name. Amen. And let there be a joy in the home. 
Ah, the name is even Elizabeth, Lord. Just as it happened to Elizabeth in the Bible, let it happen to this in Elizabeth as well. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, mm -hmm. we pray for all who are trusting, who will watch this another time, who will be linked to this another time. We pray, Lord, as they watch any time this video is played anywhere. Let all those who are trusting you for babies, receive them in bountiful folds in Jesus' name. Jesus. And Lord, not only children, but we pray for all those who are sick amid this pandemic. We ask for healing in Jesus' name. Return all your people, O oh God, to a place of fulfillment of the promises that you've made to them and the expectations on your heart. We give you glory and praise because you are prayer answering God and we know you have done exceedingly, abundantly above what we can ask or think of in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you so much, Osofo Solomon Norte. We have been blessed tonight. I mean, for my faith, my womb gets to be calling for part three or see, uh, episode three. You know, someone said that we should divide uh, epi the next part two into two different episodes. <laughs> so, I mean, and also of Mami Abigail. God bless you for your words of wisdom. I mean, as your name is, I mean, Abigail, you are a woman of wisdom as always. We are so blessed and privileged that you were able to join us this evening and be a blessing to our waiting couples. God bless you so, so much and thank you so much. If you are watching me and you like to be a partner, if you would like to support this amazing vision, I always say that it costs so much to bring this to your screen so if you are led if you are touched in any way to support whether with cash with with products anything at all there are so many activities that we want to support and undertake especially as we launch our road to one year anniversary very very soon if you like to support us in any way please do not hesitate to give us a call our numbers would be on your screen or you can simply contact us on zero triple five nine three seven seven six eight and i know that god would richly bless you now one more thing i would like to say is that we have a facebook group the my faith my womb family it's an online platform or online group created on facebook to ensure that we bond together as waiting mothers not just waiting mothers waiting fathers are encouraged to also join the community on facebook so let's just encourage ourselves on that community let's be more active let's share ideas you know all these things that osofo has mentioned let's encourage each other all the ideas of mommy has shared with us how to keep ourselves how to you know open gate policy how to explore our bodies and all that let's learn let's share knowledge it is so important and again we also have a whatsapp platform so if you like prayer support kindly get in touch we also have seasoned counselors that we can refer you to to support you and encourage you and pray with you we have women of favor as well by sister holly if you are in, if you are in need of this prayer please let us know and let us support you i also want to mention finally that by god's grace my youtube channel Wilma forson is up and running or should I say, this week we are going to bless you with our first video. Let's just take a promo for that. <laughs>